Hello, greetings mga ka-spacers natin out there. Magandang araw po sa inyong lahat. This is Professor Jun Kahigal and in today's video, we will be tackling the controversial question, how are we searching for extraterrestrial life or possibly extraterrestrial intelligent life outside our solar system? So we will be mentioning topics like the Drake's Equation, the search for exoplanets, and the Fermi Paradox. So mga ka-spacers, please like and share this video so that we could reach more people, especially the students, so that we could inspire them to love the sciences, especially astronomy. So what are we waiting for? And let's answer that question, how? Are we searching for extraterrestrial life or possibly extraterrestrial intelligent life? Is how are we searching for extraterrestrial life and possibly intelligent life outside our solar system? So that's the question that we need to answer. Now there was a scientist by the name of Frank Drake. And he came up with this equation known as the Drake's Equation. Now, I am not really good in math, but to put it simply, this is what the Drake's Equation is. So, if you will gaze at the night sky, there are billions and billions of stars in our Milky Way galaxy alone. And there are billions and billions of galaxies in the observable universe. So, since there are so many stars, there must be other planets with life. And even if only one in a billion G stars that has the right set of conditions to make a planet like Earth, and since there are many billions of G stars in the observable universe, then there must be other planets like Earth with biospheres. That is the essence of the Drake's equation. So, ang ibig lang sabihin ni Frank Drake dito, so, sang damakmak na mga between sa kalawakan, sa dami nila, hindi natin maalis ang posibilidad na may mga planeta na kagaya ng mundo natin. There must be other planets like Earth with biospheres. Kasi sa dami ng mga between sa kalawakan, imposible na walang planeta dyan. There must be other their planets similar to Earth with biospheres. So, ang tanong ngayon, have we discovered planets outside the solar system? So, the answer is yes. We have discovered thousands of planets outside the solar system and we call them exoplanets. And this was discovered by the Kepler Space Telescope. The Kepler Space Telescope is a space observatory launched by NASA to discover Earth-sized planets orbiting other stars. And this observatory was named after the astronomer Johannes Kepler. The spacecraft was launched on March 7, 2009 into an Earth-trailing heliocentric orbit. Now, here is an animation of the orbit of the Kepler Space Telescope. The Kepler Space Telescope was launched in an Earth-trailing heliocentric orbit around the Sun. So, kung mapapansin ninyo, yung Kepler Space Telescope ay sinusundan lang niya yung Earth as it revolves around the Sun. So, that is the movement of the Kepler Space Telescope. Now, the question is, how does the Kepler Space Telescope identify an exoplanet. Now, the method that was used in identifying an exoplanet is the so-called transit method. So, in the transit method, we use the spectroscope. 
Now, the spectroscope is used to detect the incoming light from the star. Now, if there is a planet between us and the star, that planet will temporarily block some of the light from the star once every orbit and this is detected by the spectroscope a process known as photometry so if you will notice in this animated illustration as the planet travels between us and the star it partially blocks some of the light and this is detected by the spectroscope so this method called the transit method is used by the Kepler Space Telescope to detect the presence of exoplanets. So to further explain the transit method used by the Kepler Space Telescope in discovering exoplanets, let's take a look at this animated illustration. So when a planet passes between a star and the Kepler Space Telescope, it partially blocks the incoming light. So there is dimming or reduction of light as the planet passes between the Kepler Space Telescope and the star. And the Kepler Space Telescope have discovered thousands of these exoplanets by observing planetary transits. The Kepler Space Telescope mission was designed to explore the diversity and structure of exoplanetary systems. Its nine-year mission resulted in the discovery of thousands of confirmed exoplanets. So isn't that fascinating indeed? Now, because of the discovery of these exoplanets by the Kepler Space Telescope, our prime candidate worlds in the search for life beyond the solar system are terrestrial-type planets within the habitable zones of their stars. So, the Kepler Space Telescope had confirmed the discovery of these thousands of exoplanets. So... Is there life on those potential habitable exoplanets discovered by the Kepler Space Telescope? Meron nga bang buhay doon? Now, we don't know, but the search continues. So, can we visit those exoplanets para malaman natin kung may buhay nga doon? Can we visit these exoplanets? So the answer is no. We cannot go to those exoplanets because of their extreme distance. Masyado po silang malayo. So if we cannot go, then how? Paano natin malalaman if life can exist on those exoplanets? So we need to look for global biomarkers. So ito yung gagawin natin para malaman natin if life can exist on those exoplanets. We need to look for biomarkers. These biomarkers should involve changes in atmospheric or surface chemistry that can only be the result of life. Now, what are these biomarkers that we need to look in order to determine whether an exoplanet can support life? Now, one biomarker is oxygen. Alright? So, if you find oxygen in any of those exoplanets, maybe some photosynthetic organisms must have created that oxygen. So, we know that the byproduct of photosynthesis is oxygen. Oxygen. So, ang ibig lang sabihin nito, kung may makikita kayong oxygen sa isang exoplanet, iisa lang ang ibig sabihin niyan. That that oxygen was produced by photosynthetic organisms. So, ibig sabihin, baka may mga photosynthetic organisms sa exoplanet na yan pag nakita nyo yung biomarker na oxygen. 
Now, another biomarker is methane. Now, methane is produced by microorganisms. So, without the presence of life, methane would be quickly oxidized and disappear from the atmosphere. Now, if you would find methane and nagtagal yung methane dyan, that means only one thing, that methane is produced by these microorganisms. So, methane is another important biomarker in the search for extraterrestrial life outside our solar system. So, the detection of these biomarkers, oxygen and methane, they play an important role in our search for extraterrestrial life. So, the detection of large amounts of methane and oxygen in the atmosphere of an extrasolar terrestrial planet would be a smoking gun. And NASA is now planning to launch the so-called NASA's Terrestrial Planet Finder. So this terrestrial planet finder is equipped with a spectroscope. The spectroscope should allow atmospheric chemists and biologists to use the relative amounts of gases like oxygen, carbon dioxide, water vapor, ozone, methane to find whether an extrasolar planet may support life. Now, with the spectroscope on board the terrestrial planet finder, we should be able to detect these biomarkers such as carbon dioxide, oxygen, and methane. And hopefully, we can detect the presence of life in any of those exoplanets. Now, aside from the Kepler Space Telescope, what other methods are employed to search for life or possibly intelligent life outside the solar system. So we are now making use of radio telescopes to scan the radio sky in search for alien signals. Now in the United States, there is an institute called SETI. SETI is the acronym for the search for extraterrestrial intelligence. And the SETI Institute uses radio telescopes combined with optical telescopes to search for signals that might be emitted by technologically advanced life forms. Now, I want to zoom in on this particular radio telescope used by SETI. This is the Arecibo Radio Telescope. The Arecibo Radio Telescope is the second largest radio telescope in the world. The largest radio telescope in the world is fast and that is in China. Now, was SETI successful in detecting alien signals? Now, the results of the SETI search was that there was detection of artificial signals. But often, these signals are identified as human sources. And sometimes these signals are unidentified but still not securely confirmed. In other words, we really cannot confirm whether these signals are from human sources or these signals may come from intelligent life outside our solar system. Now, in November 16 of 1974, a 160 69 seconds message was sent by SETI through the Arecibo radio telescope and the radio telescope was pointed towards globular cluster M13 at about 25,000 light years. This is the so-called Arecibo message and this was our first attempt to communicate with aliens. Now this message was written by several scientists including the one and only Carl Sagan. Now let us go into the details of this interesting and intriguing encoded message that was sent by the Arecibo radio telescope towards globular cluster M13. Now on top are the numbers 1 to 10. 
Then below that are the representations of the atomic numbers of key biological elements like oxygen, carbon, nitrogen. Then below that are the formulas for the sugars and bases in nucleotides of DNA. So we have adenine, thymine, cytosine, and guanine. Then below that is the shape of the DNA molecule which is a double helix as you could see in this coded message. Then below that is a human figure. Then below the human figure is the representation of the solar system with the earth displays upwards. And below the representation of the solar system is the shape of the Arecibo radio telescope. So this was the message that was sent by the Arecibo radio telescope towards globular cluster M13. So, we were able to send this coded message in outer space. So, we are just waiting for a response. Sana may mag-reply sa ating pinadilang mensahe sa outer space. So, if there is a high possibility for extraterrestrial life or possibly extraterrestrial intelligent life, then, where is everybody? Nasaan yung mga aliens na yan? Okay, nasaan ba sila? Ba't hindi ba natin sila makita? Now, this was the question raised by a scientist by the name of Enrico Fermi. The paradoxical question that Enrico Fermi asked was, Where is everyone? Nasaan yung mga aliens? Where are the aliens? Nasaan sila? That was the paradoxical question Enrico Fermi asked. So, what we have here are the possible solutions to the Fermi paradox. Ito yung magsasagot kung bakit wala tayong makitang mga aliens. So, bakit nga ba wala tayong makitang aliens? Now, one possible solution is this, that we are alone. We are the first and there is no galactic civilization. Yun ang dahilan kung bakit wala tayong makitang mga aliens. Because we are alone and we are the first. And there is no intergalactic civilization. Nag-iisa lang tayo sa universe. So, another possible solution to the Fermi Paradox in order to answer the question, where are the aliens, nasaan yung mga aliens na yan, is that civilizations are common. Alien civilizations are out there. May mga aliens. But no one has colonized the galaxy. Parang ayaw nilang mag-colonize ng mga planeta sa galaxy natin. Now, why? Bakit kaya ayaw nilang mag-colonize? Now, one possible reason is that of technological difficulties. Interstellar travel is difficult and vastly more expensive or dangerous than we think. So, isipin na lang po natin yung mga astronauts dito sa Earth. So, our astronauts, they have to endure the perils of space travel like life support, the dangers of radiation, weightlessness, and space travel is expensive. Mahal po. Just look at the Apollo program. The United States had spent billions of dollars in their Apollo program. What more yung mga aliens na yan? So, siguro natatakot takot sila because of the dangers and difficulties of space travel. Kaya ayaw nilang mag-colonize ng mga planeta sa galaxy because of the dangers and the financial burden of space travel. Now, another possible solution to the Fermi Paradox in order to answer the question where is everyone, nasaan yung mga aliens, bakit wala tayong ma-encounter na alien civilization? Now, maybe because of our desire to explore is unusual and unique in the human spirit. And other societies or alien societies would not choose to live their 
other stars. So, ang ibig lang sabihin lang niya, ayaw talaga ng mga aliens na umalis sa kanilang mga planeta. They don't want to leave their stars. They don't want to explore outer space. Unlike us, now our desire is unique. Gusto natin mag-explore where no man has gone before. Yun yung ating human spirit to explore. Pero itong mga alien civilization, siguro ayaw nilang magbiyahe, ayaw nilang mag-explore. So, yun ang reason kaya wala tayong ma-encounter na alien civilizations because they would not choose to leave their planets. Now, a possible solution to the Fermi Paradox in order to answer the question where is everyone, nasaan yung mga aliens, at bakit tayo walang ma-encounter or ma-meet na aliens is that maybe these alien civilizations, they tend to destroy themselves. So this is one reason why we haven't met or encountered any alien civilizations is that these alien civilizations they tend to destroy themselves. Just like in Star Wars, if you are aware of the Death Star. So, the Death Star is a planet destroyer. So, probably yun ang reason kung bakit wala tayong ma-encounter na alien life forms because these alien civilizations, they tend to destroy themselves. Now, another possible solution to the Fermi Paradox kung bakit wala tayong makita or ma-meet na aliens, it's because there is a galactic civilization. Meron. May mga aliens. But they are deliberately avoiding us. They are hiding their existence from us. Or we haven't just found them yet. Baka hindi natin pa sila nakikita. So, ang mga aliens, nandyan lang. Baka nasa paligid lang natin and they are deliberately avoiding us. So, ini iwasan lang tayo nila or they are hiding their existence from us. So who knows? Baka yung katabi ninyo ay isang alien life form disguised as a human. No, diba? So hindi natin alam. So they are deliberately avoiding us or they are hiding their existence from us. So hindi natin alam. Baka ganun kung bakit wala tayong ma-encounter na aliens. Kasi iniiwasan tayo or baka nandyan sila sa paligid or katabi nyo lang they are hiding their existence from us alright so we are still searching for extraterrestrial life so the Voyager space probes are out in the solar system and into interstellar space. Hopefully that one day some alien life forms may encounter the Voyager space probes. Now what is so special about the Voyager space probes? Now inside Voyager is a golden record. Now in this golden record are the images and songs of planet Earth. So hopefully some alien intelligent life forms may encounter the Voyager space probes and hopefully they would play that golden record so that they would know who we are. Sana may makapulot na advanced alien life forms sa Voyager and sana mapatugtog nila yung golden record na yan para malaman nila na hindi sila nag-iisa dito sa universe. Tonight. The search for extraterrestrial intelligence, a noble scientific pursuit or wild sci-fi conspiracy theory. The search for extraterrestrial intelligence, or SETI, is all about finding signs of intelligent life elsewhere in our galaxy. And it's not science fiction. Turns out, NASA has been searching too. In 1992, NASA established an official SETI program to use radio astronomy to find signs of life on other planets. But after just one year, Congress pulled its funding. But that search hasn't stopped. One of the main groups pushing it forward is the SETI Institute, which gets partial funding from NASA and has a team of scientists studying exoplanets, examining how planets were formed, and researching the astrobiology needed to support life on other worlds. I know what you're thinking. The hunt for alien life is real, but we're not overrun with little green men. What gives? Well, there's no need to go full Area 51 on me.
First up, there's radio astronomy. We've been studying radio signals for signs of life ever since Marconi supposedly picked up transmissions from beyond Earth back in 1919. But one of the biggest discoveries came in 1977 from the Big Ear Radio Telescope in Ohio. Astronomer Jerry Eamon was picking through data from the Big Ear, no, that's not a gross way of saying he was using a Q-tip, and in that data he found a radio signal that lasted roughly one minute. He wrote the word WOW on the printout, because apparently he's a kid in a 1950s comic book, and it's been known as the WOW signal ever since. While this discovery sounds cool, it wasn't exactly some secret alien message. It was just a mash of encoded data represented by six characters. 6EQUJ5. Secugus? Sequagus? Yeah, it's effectively just an intergalactic vanity license plate. See kids, science can be boring. Next up, exoplanets. Hey, cool, planets just like Earth with the perfect conditions for life. Hell, these things even have their own NASA posters. Surely we'll find aliens there, right? Well, right now we search for exoplanets using instruments like TESS, the Transiting Exoplanet Survey Satellite. TESS finds planets by monitoring stars to see drops in their brightness, caused by a planet passing in front. As far as finding perfect alien planets, that's the equivalent of choosing your husband because he walked in front of the screen at the movies. Still, TESS has found more than 500 exoplanet candidates and, in April 2019, it found its first Earth-sized world. Now that's cool! Stars, they're just like us. Well, no, because while it could look like this, right now it looks like this. And that's not even the exoplanet, that's its star. Also, it's called HD 21749C. Okay, so this is the alien episode. Surely we have something really cool and weird that we're doing in the search for extraterrestrial intelligence. Well, you're in luck because I have some 100% real, 100% bonkers ET factoids for you. First up, let's talk about the Pentagon's secret UFO program. All right, in 2017, the New York Times reported that the feds had spent $22 million on a secret program at the Pentagon to look into reports of unidentified flying objects. Apparently, Defense defunded the program in 2012, but it might still exist. Wake up, sheeple! You want more UFOs? Good. According to a Politico report from April 2019, the US Navy is working on procedures to report unidentified aircraft so, quote, incursions can be made to the, quote, authorities, which we all know is code for the Freemasons of building a secret UFO database. And finally, adjust your hearing membranes, lizard people, because it turns out we were the aliens all along. Remember back in 2017 when the Oumuamua asteroid floated into our lives? We now know it's an icy comet, but back then, Harvard scientists thought it could be a, quote, fully operational probe sent intentionally to Earth's vicinity by an alien civilization. Not only that, but some scientists believe interstellar objects like Oumuamua could provide enough insulation and radiation protection to preserve living organisms on an interstellar journey. It's a process called panspermia. Yikes. What if that's how life on Earth started? What if we all came here as tiny microbes on an asteroid smashing into Earth and we're just waiting to get reawakened by the hypnotoads? Makes you think. Of course, that's all the wildly theoretical and highly speculative stuff of science fiction films. It was just a comet, not an asteroid, and there are no... Alright, so I hope you were able to answer that question about the search for extraterrestrial life or possibly extraterrestrial intelligent life outside our solar system so mga spacers again please like and share this video and don't forget to subscribe to my channel youtube channel the science guy professor june kahiga all right, so I guess that's about it. Thank you very much for your attention. And uh, again, like and share this video. This is your Spacer and Space Commander, Professor Jun Kahigal, saying live long and prosper. All right, see you in our next video. Bye-bye, guys.